Today we will cover using the SVUnit, a unit test framework, to test a system Verilog class. Um, so in this example, I have a class, a, a very basic class, uh, called my scoreboard. So this class has a queue, uh, and every time a write comes in to this class, um, an item is added into the queue, and then we check whether the queue already has the same item. And if so, um, basically an error message is flagged, and the return value is zero. Uh, and, and if everything is good, uh, the return value is one. Uh, so you might recognize this functionality as, you know, one of the many checks you may have in, in your test bench. Um, so this is trying to emulate a, a real use case here. So let's go ahead and start writing the, the test using SVUnit. Uh, so first we um, define our unit under test. So we're going to have our scoreboard, my scoreboard, unit under test. Um, now, next we're going to build this unit. So there's two choices here. Uh, one choice is to use build it in the build method. And then we will use the same scoreboard for all our tests. The other choice um, is, is to build it in the setup method and effectively building a new scoreboard for every test. So I'm going to use the first method just because that is um, the most commonly used. And it'll work for this test. So I'm going to build it here, but the one thing I will do in the setup method is I will go ahead and call uh, the reset method of our of our class uh, in order to basically reset the scoreboard. All right, now let's get down to the unit test. So first, I'll do a basic um, what I'll call a write test. So we'll go ahead and uh, write um, basically a value to the scoreboard. And we know that we're supposed to get a return value of 1, so we're going to wrap this in a macro, and we're going to check that the return value is a 1. We can use the fail if macro, um, I'm sorry, fail unless, so if, uh, if the return is not a 1, then we'll have, a, we'll have an uh, SV unit fail here. Uh, then we're also going to check that the Q size is now 1, so we're going to do another check, fail unless unit under test in flight Q size is equal to 1. And now uh, we're going to do a, we're going to check to make sure that our reset works properly. So after we do a reset, we expect um, that the in flight Q will be 0. So we're going to use this, this time we're going to use that fail if macro. So if it's not zero, then um, it will flag an error. So unit under test, in flight Q size. And this is our first test. Uh, we're going to do another one. Let's start another one. So this time we're going to test that um, duplicate functionality. So we're going to call it a duplicate test. So what we're going to do is we're going to write the same value twice to our unit under test. Um, so I'll just copy the first line over here. We're going to write it once. And then we're going to write the second time. And we know a second time uh, this is going to cause a fail. So we expect uh, the return value to be 0. So that's why I changed the macro here to a fail if. OK, let's conclude as we test end. So now we have two um, very basic tests for our class. So let's go ahead and run this. So as we knew this running. So as you can see, uh, both of the tests have failed. And in the message, you, you see kind of a message exactly where it failed and uh, the line where it failed at. So we're talking about line 46 here. So as we go over here, we see that the queue size is was not 1. Um, now this was intentional, so I actually introduced a bug uh, into the scoreboard and you know this is one of the many things that you will encounter um, as a verification engineer or a design engineer and what I often see is uh, when creating some new code you know I can introduce a bug and then when I throw it into the code base which has you know hundreds and maybe thousands of files it might take a while for this bug to manifest itself. So this is one of the many benefits of um, unit testing early and small scale is you can find you know simple bugs like that 
and then you know make sure that uh, any other functionality you add doesn't break existing functionality. So in this case, the backshell bug is that uh, we checked the inflight queue, but we ever, never actually added the item uh, as it came into the right. So I'm going to go ahead and fix this bug. So I'm going to say inflight queue push back item to add it to the queue. And now I'm going to go ahead and rerun the unit tests. Uh, okay, so success. Everything passed this time.